cherished father, you must not learn me how to remember any extraordinary pleasure. Herein I see thou lovest me not with the same weight that I love thee. If my uncle, my banished father, had banished thy uncle, the duke, my father, so thou hadst been still with me, I could have taught my love to take thy father for mine. So if thou, if the truth of thy love to me were so righteously tempered as mine is to thee. Well, I, I will forget the condition of my estate to rejoice in yours. You know my father hath no child but I, nor none is like to have, and truly, when he dies, thou shalt be his heir. For what he hath taken away from thy father perforce, I will render thee again in affection. By mine honor, I will. And when I break that oath, let me turn monster. <laughs> Therefore, my sweet rose, my dear rose, be merry. Oh, from henceforth I will, cuz. Oh, look, here comes the duke. <clears throat> How now, daughter? Cousin, are you crept hither to see the wrestling? Aye, my liege, so please you give us leave. Oh, you will take little delight in it, I can tell you. There's such odds in the man. In pity of the challenger's youth, I would fain dissuade him, but he cannot be entreated. Speak to him, lady. See if you can move him. I'll not be by. Young gentleman. Have you challenged Charles the wrestler? No, fair princess. I am but the general challenger. I come but in as others do to try with him the strength of my youth. Young gentlemen, your spirits are too bold for your years. We pray you for your own sake to embrace your own safety and give over this attack. Do, young sir. Your reputation shall not therefore be misprized. We will make it our suit to the duke that the wrestling might not go forward. I beseech you, punish me not with your hard thoughts, wherein I confess me much guilty to, den to deny so fair and excellent ladies anything. But let your fair eyes and gentle wishes go with me to my trial, wherein if I be foiled, there is but one shame that was never gracious. If killed, but one dead that is willing to be so. I shall do my friends no wrong, for I have none to lament me. In the world no injury, for in it I have nothing. Only in the world I but fill up a place, which may be better supplied when I have made it empty. Little strength I have, I would it were with you. And mine, to eke out hers. <clears throat> Fare you well. Pray heaven I be deceived in you. Your heart's desires be with you. Hi. What is thy name, young man? Orlando, my liege, the youngest son of Sir Roland de Bois. I would thou hast been son to some man else. The world esteemed thy father honorable, but I did find him still mine enemy. Thou should have better pleased me with this deed had thou descended from another house. But fare thee well, thou art a gallant youth. I would thou hast told me of another father. Were I my father, cause would I do this? I would rather be Sir Roland's son, his youngest son. It would not change that calling to be adopted heir to Frederick. My father loved Sir Roland as his soul, and all the world was of my father's mind. Had I before known this young man his son, I would have given him tears unto entreaties ere he should thus have ventured. Then, my cousin, let us go thank him and encourage him. My father's rough and envious disposition sticks me at heart. Sir, you have well deserved. If you do keep your promises in love, but justly, as you have exceeded all promise, your mistress shall be happy. Gentlemen, wear this for me, one that out of suits with fortune could give more, but that her hand lacks means. <clears throat> Will you go, cuz? Aye. Fare you well, fair gentlemen. Can, can I not say I thank you? I, my better parts are all thrown down, and that which stands up here is but a quintain, a mere, a mere lifeless block. He calls us back. My pride fell with my fortune, so I'll ask him what he would. <laughs> <laughs> Did you call, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you have wrestled well and overthrown more than your enemies. Will you go, Kaz? Have with you. 
Fare you well. What passion hangs these weights upon my tongue? I, I cannot speak to her, and yet she urged conference. <laughs> oh, oh, poor Orlando, thou art overthrown. Or Charles, or something weaker, masters thee. Is it possible on such a sudden you should fall into so strong a liking with old Sir Roland's youngest son? The Duke, my father, loved his father dearly. Doth it therefore ensue that you should love his son dearly? By this kind of chase I should hate him, for my father hated his father dearly. Yet I hate not Orlando. Oh, faith, hate him not for my sake. Why should I not? Doth he not deserve well? I may love him for that. And do you love him because I do? Oh, look, here comes the Duke. <clears throat> With his eyes full of anger. Mistress, dispatch you with your safest haste and get you from our court. Me, uncle. You, cousin. Within these ten days, if that thou beest found so near our public court as twenty miles, thou diest for it. I do beseech your grace, let me the knowledge of my fault bear with me. Never so much as in a thought unborn did I offend your highness. Thus do all traitors. If their purgation did consist in words, they are as innocent as grace itself. Let it suffice thee that I trust thee not. Yet your mistrust cannot make me a traitor. Tell me whereon the likelihood depends. Thou art thy father's daughter. There is enough. So was I when your highness took his dukedom. So was I when your highness banished him. Dear sovereign, hear me speak. I, Celia, we stayed her for your sake. Else had she with her father ranged along. I did not then entreat to have her stay. It was your pleasure and your own remorse. I was too young that time to value her, but now I know her. If she be a traitor, why so am I? She is too subtle for thee, and her smoothness, her very silence, and her patience speak to the people, and they pity her. Thou art a fool. She robs thee of thy name, and thou wilt show more bright and seem more virtuous when she is gone. Then open not thy lips. Firm and irrevocable is my doom, which I have passed upon her. She is banished. Pronounce that sentence then on me, my lady. I cannot live out of her company. You are a fool. You, niece, provide yourself. If you outstay the time, upon my honor and in the greatness of my word, you die. not. 
lead to us, maids as we are, to travel forth so far. Beauty provoketh thieves sooner than gold. I'll put myself in poor and mean attire, and with a kind of umber smirch my face, alike to you. So shall we pass along and never stir a sail. Were it not better, because that I am more than calm and tall, that I did shoot me at all points like a man. A gallant curdle axe upon my thigh, a boar spear in my hand, and in my heart lie there what hidden woman's fear there will. We'll have a swashing and a marshal outside, as many other mannish cowards have that you outface it with their semblances. What shall I call thee when thou art a man? I'll have no worse a name than Jove's own page, and therefore look you call me Ganymede. Hmm. <laughs> well, what will you be called? Something that has a reference to my state. No longer Celia, but Aliena. Uh, but, cousin, what if we essayed to steal the clownish fool out of your father's court? Would he not be a comfort to our travels? He'll go along with the wide world with me. Leave me alone to woo him. Let's away and get our jewels and our wealth together. Devise the fittest time and safest way to hide us from pursuit that will be made after my flight. Now, go we in content to liberty and not to banishment. <sighs> That's it? That's it. Good work, guys. Good work. I think we got in just in time. I think so. Yeah, no, nice work, Jeff. Really nice. Oh, thank you. Are we I'm still working on that lower voice. Yeah. Did you tell? Yeah. 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 At the beginning, I didn't quite. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to stop recording. Thank you for